I guess the negators didn't learn their lessons to never let their guards down because just like volume 11, the man who lurks within the shadows has snuck his way beneath the Union's radar for an emphatic introduction. Today we take a look at chapter 218, the return of Unruin, and as the kids might say, the aura is unmatched. Let's talk about it. So we kick things off inside the master room as our boy So says to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. If you're new here, be invited to all of days, my name is Zeus. I hope you are all having an amazing day. You didn't think I was gonna not tell you, not say to you that I hope you're having an amazing day. Come on, you've been here, you've been here. So before I so rudely interjected myself, I was mentioning that we were taking a menacing peek inside of the master room as all of the superior rules watched the Union successfully negate Tatiana's tragedy. Seemingly unbothered by Tatiana joining the crew, he tells all the rules not to fret, you can rest assured knowing that I already have a plan in motion which you guys will see come to fruition very soon and obviously very soon. But we also got some beef brewing as so promises change in war that they will be able to eliminate Gina and Billy respectively. Now the Gina situation makes a bit of sense. Change versus unchanged, girl versus girl, a tale as old as time. People who are like each other like to hate each other. Us men, we don't even take a step into that battle because we do not need to try to understand it. But war. Why do you hate our boy Billy? And I think the answer is kind of already set in stone. It actually makes a lot of sense why War would hate Billy. And that is because one of the reasons, or probably the main motivation behind Billy even being a mercenary, is that he wants to rid the world of all the unfairness that is brought about through conflict and war. But just because he wants to do that shit, like, bro, get it out your mouth, dog. Calm down. We switch paces a bit as we go back to the Union. They're conversing with the young Tatiana as she comes to terms with this new reality of hers. It's great to see that she got to live her childhood dream of becoming a model, but she seems to be more than happy to switch to a new path in life alongside the Union. But as everybody rejoices in this moment, Fuko sees something at the corner of her eyes. Blitzing the Union out of nowhere, spears of blood assault all of the members, with only a few able to evade or protect themselves. And as they collect themselves and assess the damage, they hear from across the room, leave unchanged and unfair. Eh, means everybody else is fair game. Understood. And this was not some careless attack, as Fuko looks down into her arms at the wounded Shikara she notices. He's blinded, and as she understands what that means, the goat tells her exactly what she's thinking. <laughs> you were there at Spring, boys. You were there. You saw what happened at Spring whenever that thing. <laughs> Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I hope the camera's focused, because y'all need to focus up and think about Unruin. That's a dangerous goddamn mantle Tampa, and man, this revamped design, this revamped aura. Got a lot to talk about. Okay, I know I just went on my high horse a little bit, but like, let me reiterate that a little bit, y'all. The revamp design, the aura, the power exuded by him just via entering the room. The swagger in this dude by just sitting in a chair. Like, y'all aren't like this. That's a king. That's the return of the goat, the Don, the guy who can only be said to be rivaled by, in my opinion, the gods and undead. Put some respect on this guy's name. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. But let me get back on topic. Without hesitation, Fuko rushes into ruin, shooting his head off and lobbing that bit to Gina like D-Wade to LeBron James to seal his head from regenerating. But Fuko, it ain't that simple this time. If y'all peep my video on Ruin, you would already know that I've been theorizing that this boy on Ruin is a little bit more different than we could even imagine. And that all came from the idea that he had already known a bit more about souls than any of us knew last loop. And although he obviously didn't pick up on the idea enough to fully be able to harness them, even to the uh, capacity that Andy was using last loop, we knew that Unruin was knocking at the door. And as this dude has obviously achieved this level of soul manipulation, soul use, soul, soul ability, <laughs> soul ability, I mean, he's literally working with the number one master rule, the guy who uses souls. He's just like that. And we saw... Shout out Autumn, I missed the Undead Unlucky anime. Once again, y'all, like we're getting a freaking uh, summer movie, not summer. Billy versus Julie's movie, shout out the gang. But we saw during Autumn, even during the anime, by using your soul, 
If you have the power of regeneration, you don't need to regenerate from your head. It's not a brain thing. It's about your soul. So with all that being said, it's not that easy, Fuko. <laughs> so Fuko, I understand it. You better call Nico. You better call Kurosu. You better tell them to evacuate the city. We have a dragon level threat and his name is on ruin. Like guys, I'm sorry for all the tangents this chapter, but the goat just reintroduced himself to the series. I'm gonna be a little bit hype. Let me get back on topic though. Fuko tells everybody to back up a bit because Unruin is very hard boiled. Not only is he extremely strong, but this guy's got immortality. And if people don't understand how to fight him and the tricks he's going to be using with blood and shadow, it's probably not worth just throwing bodies out on the front lines. And I really laughed hard right here because as we saw, what, one, two chapters ago, our boy, that man, Sean boy, that Sean Dax. <laughs> he literally told Fuko, like, hey, dude, like, why don't we just use Remember Artifact? It would make everything easier for the Tatiana situation. It would probably just make things easier in life in general. And right now, right here, I'm really thinking, wow, it would have been nice to have Billy already know how to fight off against Unruin because this shit sucks. Unruin came in with the quickness, with the blickness, and just, he just got on top. And Unruin wasn't the only man bringing the hype to the table this chapter, because our girl Izumo Fuko was just hard boiled as shit. Whenever she said to evacuate the city, I imagine she was talking about, you know, because Unruin is such a dangerous threat, we need to get everybody away from here, but no! She said if I'm fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear! She takes off her freaking glove! dislodges it into our boy Ruin's abdomen with one of the hardest punches we've seen this in series and leaves off a battle bullet. And Gina uses Unchanged to protect the gang from this meteor shower that comes from the glove and as they stand atop of this rubble looking for any signs of our boy on Ruin beneath this giant mound of dirt, he attacks them from the only blind spot which Unchanged can leave beneath them. And I love all the callbacks to Unruin just being such a hard-boiled individual, obviously, as we got to see during the fight with him and Billy and Tatiana during Ragnarok. Like, he knows how to perceive one's abilities and find the loopholes in it in order to win a negator fight. Like, he's like Andy. Obviously, he's quite literally the parallel to Andy from God's own uh, side, but it always shows in these sort of fine-tuned mov fine moments in a fight because Unruin just really hard-boiled. But with Fuko incapacitated from Ruin's surprise attack, he stands atop of her and gives a little speech, which is what I found most interesting in this entire chapter. While talking to Fuko, Ruin says that he's always wondered, why do you think you can beat God? Why do you fight this large fight against him if you've already experienced Ragnarok and all the terrible things which come with it? And there were two main conclusions that came to me from him saying it in this way. One, like I've been telling y'all, Unruin might deadass be immortal, and although Joey's never experienced him during all of her times looping and using the arc, I think he could have deadass just been hiding in the shadows, you know, lurking, no Uma puns intended, and Joey's never made it far enough for him to be provoked to take action against her. We don't know much about him aside from the fact that every time he comes to Earth and, you know, impedes us, it's only because of our progress. It's because we have provoked God or the master rules to take action. And that is exactly what has happened this time once again. And we know that Julius had never made it far enough during her time leading the union to actually need that sort of action to be taken against her. So it genuinely would make sense if he had been alive and even take it from this perspective. If Unruin wanted to live the happiest life Unruin could live, it wouldn't be by fighting the negators in them. It would just be by them dying and losing and him getting to experience Ragnarok. Cause as we know, he's got that masochistic martyr-like personality where he likes to get burned. He likes to be felt in the presence of the sun and the presence of the gods. So it genuinely would make sense if this guy's still been around all this time. But number two, similar to what occurred during Kurosu's arc is so controlling ruin right now. Obviously, this new character design is like hella punk rock, hella rock star, I fucking love it. But the white hair genuinely does make you start to believe that So might be pulling the strings behind Ruin right now. And obviously, we know that they've already interacted, they've already been in contact with one another just for him to even be told these uh, rules of you're not allowed to kill Gina or Billy. But during that conversation, did 
So, in a very similar manner to what he did with uh, Kurosu, administer enough soul into our boy Ruin to completely take over his body and just use him as a marionette. And I only ask this because this conversation, what the questions that uh, Ruin is bringing up to Fuko right now, they're all questions which you would be asking if you've lived long enough to ask those questions. They're not questions that somebody would be bringing up if they've only like learned about one loop or they've only got memories of this one loop. And a lot of people don't believe that Ruin is immortal, but I don't know. I'm over here freaking hyperbolically theorizing on bullshit. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So although Ruin is perplexed why somebody who's experienced the loops would fight back against God, like, do you really think they have a chance? The answer to all of those questions is pretty damn simple. As an unseen Julie Eustitia stabs her rapier through Ruin, Huko frames the situation correctly to Ruin. She says the only reason he's here is because God and the rules are scared. Scared that today they finally fulfilled their goal of completing the union. Because they know that whenever the union is complete, that will come with a battle bullet for 210 years. And that red knit cap will bring back our main man, Andy, the undead. Not nobody dead. Like a beautiful chapter. Very fire. I think in terms of what it symbolically means for the series, in terms of, you know, like introducing us to the end games, the end of Undead Unluck has started today with this chapter. It was badass. And the action within it was some of the best fights we've seen in all of Loop 2. It was very fun. Even just seeing Unruin get introduced again was cool. But one large gripe I have with this, and like, I know somebody feels the same way as me. I know a lot of people are just excited just to, you know, be back in terms of high octane more plot progressive or you know thing we're back into scenarios that are truly like moving the narrative forward um i hate that like unruin just gets introduced like this like the same exact way that it occurred last loop the same thing where we finally completed all the quests that need to be done before ragnarok oh wow Ragnarok starts with Ruin, like it was just like Yoshifumi, I know your bag goes deeper than to use every character as the same exact narrative device or plot device each time. Like I think a character is a tool, a moment is a tool in a story and to put the same exact tools in the same exact moments to do the same exact thing is a little bit cheap. And I know this is a shonen series so I can't be asking people to like reinvent the wheel, but Yoshifumi. I just think you had more goatness in you. Like, I know it wasn't even framed as a surprise this time either. And that's where I think Yoshifumi did a good job of not trying to like do this super emphatic plot twist moment of having Unruin pop up out of nowhere. It was framed as, no, we know there's something going to occur this chapter from page one. We just had to see what it actually was. I think as soon as we, everybody read page one, we all knew what was going to happen. But that's just, I don't know. I love more of Undead Unluck, but sometimes it's like, damn, did you have to give us the same exact thing? <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, the chapter itself, if I'm not looking at it with that bit of a jaded, entitled eye of wanting to see something different than what occurred, it was really badass. Like a 10 out of 10 chapter. Really cool. Our boy Ruins back and he's got that sack on him. <laughs> back with the white hair and shit. Like, come on. Come on, I'm excited to see what happens next and, you know, there's a lot that's going to occur now. The master rules shall all be free as Apocalypse even proposed to them during the last quest that actually got administered to us. He said that all of you guys can leave if you want. I wonder if all of them are actually going to get to leave following Andy, you know, leaving post because Andy was the only one restricting them from actually leaving from the sun, from the master room. So potentially we could see all of them just jump down onto earth or we could see something cooler or not even cooler. I think the coolest situation would be all of them coming down to earth and wreaking havoc in their own ways. Maybe it doesn't have to be like a giant spring type situation where it's like a war versus like all of them in one sitting versus all of us all together you know let's say that we're all fighting in england i don't know if it'll be that or if we're gonna have everybody in disparate situations you know fighting one person in egypt one person in yada 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 i wonder even how long this is gonna be 
how long is Undead Unluck has in it? Like, dude, there's still a lot of questions that I'm asking myself. There's still a lot of love I got for this series. And I think Yoshifumi is back on the right path in terms of, you know, just getting everybody interested, getting everybody excited for what's to come. Because let me know if you felt the same way, but I hated the last two arcs, genuinely. Didn't like them at all. I think for the sake of delivering narratively, like, yeah, you fixed the tragedies, we got introduced to the characters, yada, 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 but shit just got old maybe that's just what it was the pattern of recruiting people and saving people especially somebody like tatiana who you want to make such a important character such an important one i think you should have probably had a master rule be a part of that arc and maybe even had this arc come way beforehand like an arc like rips i know everybody loves rip and that was an important one but i don't think to make tatiana's as narratively important as it was it made sense to not, you know, like flush that shit out, make that shit like really be something special. But oh, that's just, these are just complaints. That's why I didn't make a video on it because there's no reason to complain about something whenever you're gonna read it the next week. <laughs> you, hey, if you ever gonna complain about some bullshit and you're gonna read it the next week, think about that statement. But I'm out of here. I'll see you later.